Good afternoon, guys. Sorry it's been kind of bleak here. We haven't been going live a ton because we had a big class in town and we were just so busy working on some big projects, but they were so fun. And I'm going to finish one of them with you guys today. But first, I'm doing a little test sample, trying to do a lighter wood grain. So this is, we're going to attempt a wood grain look here. And um, we did a really good one yesterday, but we did a really dark bronze wood grain. Today we're going to start out with almond. And I apologize if you guys hear me blow my nose a few times. It's probably terrible, but I have allergies and we live in Colorado. <coughs> okay. It's not the end of the day. How is everyone today? If you guys could do me a favor and let me know where you're watching from, that'd be a fun one. I'd like to see where you guys are all watching from and, and please let us know what kind of projects you'd like to see next. This, today's a wood grain. Let me know what kind of epoxy projects you would rather see. So if you'd rather see something totally different, this is your guys' class. I got a big blob of alcohol in there. Ooh. Michael's being a pimp. Spain? Where are you at in Spain? That sounds exciting. I want to hike the south of Spain. I've never, never done that. My dad did, but Spain, I am definitely is on my to-do list. I just, I want to hike the, my dad went after he got back from Afghanistan. Um, he hiked like five, ten miles a day and spent months all the way all around in southern Spain and said it was the most fun he'd ever had. The table is gorgeous and we're going to show you guys that table here in just a minute, guys. So remember you're watching, we are in Grand Junction, Colorado, that's the western side of the state, out in the desert, the, the high desert because we're right up against the mountains. So kind of, I believe it's kind of the best place you could ever live. If you, if you love outdoors and sunshine the majority of the time. We have LA, New Jersey, UK. South Carolina. Is there an echo? That's God repeating to you what I said. This is our almond base pigment. So we're pouring almond down and then we're gonna do all our accents and we are doing a wood graining pattern. So this should look very, very different. Oh, should... well, thanks for letting us know too. We are always trying to communicate. I'm trying to learn how to communicate better. I'm not very good in front of people, so. That's all the people that think I talk so calm. I always try to explain, like, you know what? I get calm when I'm nervous, and, and I know I shouldn't be nervous, but I do care about these things turning out for you guys. And I'm not very good talking to people. Some people think I am because I do it a lot, but it's not the, it's probably not my comfort zone. And we just work with hot pans. Hot pans? Not as good as any other good countertop. 500 degree temperature resistant um, to incidental heat contact. I wouldn't just set hot pans on it on purpose, but if you accidentally set boiling water on it or something like that, that's 212, 212 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level. So, um, you know, 500 is double that, so you should be pretty darn safe for your average cooking. Zero fumes in this product, and this is actually unique even for products that are advertised as zero fumes, because even the zero VOC supposedly product still has a lot more harmful chemicals. This here, Specifically, this is Countertop's um, Platinum brand and Diamond Coats Black Label, and that's um, what we're using right now. And it is a very healthy, non-hazardous resin. And we get clearer, harder, more beautiful top coats out of it like that. So let me know how y'all are doing today. Do we have classes? We do classes once a month, I believe. <coughs> I feel terrible doing that. I just blew my nose on a live. I probably, there is an, actually, I did not blow my nose. There's an elephant over, he just left. You guys didn't, you didn't get to see him. He was trumpeting. Is there any no, just hay fever to me. So 
the only allergies I have, and it's like the freaking curse of year, we have the most beautiful flowers right now ever. And there's, I was out in the ugliest desert we have around here the other day. Um, and I counted six flowers just from sitting in one spot. I mean, a place I've never even seen a single flower. And there were six different varieties, species of flowers, all from one point. It's just, we got so much snow load and rain this winter. We got amazingly hammered by snow. And that makes beautiful, beautiful springs. But it gives me sniffly allergies the whole time. And my poor little girl, she now has allergies. So I thought the fact that she was a little brown Mexican, she would be able to dodge the white man's disease of allergies, but apparently she was not able to. So now I'm, I feel so bad she always has the same hay fever I do. It's funny, all my Mexican friends in the Marine Corps used to laugh at me and say, you got a white man's disease with allergies. Not one of them ever had allergies. And I'd always, every where we'd go, I was always with a lot of Hispanic guys and they'd always laugh that I'd always have allergies and they never would. Now, we're just applying the product for now, guys. So it's gonna be quite a bit different than this, but I'm trying to get the accent material down out of the cup onto the surface for the graining effect, so. And I want it to be kind of linear, so I'm not trying to drag all this out with a knife. We're wanting this to be a really light wood grain, so hopefully you guys are able to see it. Remember, let us know what you'd rather see, some other projects you'd like to see, and remember this. Spotted board. Say what? Green spotted board. Uh, you want to see a green spotted board? Yeah. Oh, maybe that's it. Are you guys looking at the sample on the wall when you're talking about that? or? Trans gold. This is translucent gold. It really doesn't show a lot on a lighter background like this, but we wanted it subtle. It, it's really going to pop in sunlight. In sunlight, this gold, the little gold veins right here would get really crisp and light. We're pouring right now just on hollow core doors. We use those in our shop as like sample backings just because they're lightweight, hollow, carry them around. Come on, guys, don't make fun of me for being weak just because I don't like to carry heavy stuff all the time. White. And this is a this is a liquid base. So we did about 50/50 liquid and a metallic. So the base is obviously a liquid. So you get a really opaque, um, single color, non-metallic, non-reflective. You can do them really basic and simple like that with the liquid colors, because our liquid colors don't really reflect back, um, which I like that. Um, but then the metallics, you can do some really neat contrasting action with those. So that's why we're kind of mixing both. Jason, yo, what's up? Jason, you're a good man, dude. I don't, you're always, uh, it's awesome to be supported by such awesome customers. I love y'all. So, you know what? I eat more local honey than the, I'm probably, the, the honeybees are hating me probably. And so far it hasn't been, I, maybe I'd be way worse. <laughs> now, I just put it in stuff though. So, if somebody has some real knowledge about that, I should just eat like a half a cup a day or something. But I put it in my. Oh yeah. Use it or lose it. Right now it looks like little sperm shots all over. I know, guys. We're gonna. This little happy sperm shots are gonna turn into happy accidents and wood grains, and they're gonna be much more beautiful in a second. Or horrible, because I am the one doing it. So. Never get too much hope. Don't be too hopeful if you are if you have Levi on the trowel because there's always a chance I'll go to the wrong trowel and just totally wreck our day, guys. So. Is, it, is this more dense in color on one side the Yeah, I want it very random because I'm going to do a wood graining effect and it takes quite a few passes, but... Ooh. 
Ooh. Ooh. Call us before you do that bathroom and we'll walk you through it. That's exciting. Bob Ross. You guys and your Bob Ross comments are way too sweet. Bob Ross is going to come back from the dead and beat my ass in my parking lot. Be like, you're a faker. You were talking all, you were talking all slow because you're stupid and nervous. That's what he'd tell me. He'd be like, I talk slow because I'm cool. I just get nervous when I'm on camera. I don't even know why. I know there's probably nobody even viewing it, but I still get nervous. It's very. This is, um, it's, it's, well, we poured it about 90 some degrees, what, 90, probably 91, 92 degrees, so kind of warmer, kind of on the hotter side if you're trying to do something big. But I'm really amazing at everything I do, so I can still make it work at 90. I'm joking, guys. Don't get mad at me for joking. Ah! Get the confidence, dude. I, I mess up everything. You guys are going to do amazing. If you ever want to do your kitchen, all you need to do is call us and we'll walk you through the whole thing. If you want to really knock it out of the park and make the coolest project you've ever seen, call our office first. Okay, I'm going to do one more thing because I notice right now I'm getting some really good striations, but it's not super solid. So before I continue across this too far, I'm going to spray it with some accent colors and these will also get mixed right in. So this is going to go pretty well. So. This is just 99% isopropyl with um, bronze inside of it. So we're spraying our bronze mica powder down and we're using um, isopropyl alcohol just to kind of get it out of the sprayer and make the sprayer work. So that's why we, we put this all in alcohol. And Go a little bit of gold, maybe. I want to be a little bit random with the gold because I don't want the whole door gold, but I do want some chopped in here pretty nicely. Now let's see if our graining and veining is a little better. Now just remember, you don't have to get it all done in one stroke, guys. You can do lots and lots of strokes and that makes the lady happier that's buying the table. Some people just want to run a wood grain across it and be done. Take as much time as you need. Go back and spray more and make lots of passes until you see that kind of graining effect kind of popping out at you that you want. So this can be very, very fun. Lots of strokes, guys. Lots of strokes. Sorry I'm so dirty, I promise I'm not homeless. I've just been sanding. You guys are gonna see the other project I was working on in just a second. As soon as I'm done with this, the big old Georgia O'Queef right there, right out in the center. I'm taking my damn time on this tree, guys. Taking my time. What would I do without such incredible customers? We have the best customers, I believe, in the world. I like, I'll be in like my buddy's store, and he deals with such stupid shit, with such stupid people, and I'm like, man, I wish he could have the blessing I do because I feel like I can't wait to get to work and see my employees, my customers, like jobs they're completing. It's actually exciting. Do one more little George O'Queef right there. Started it. I poured it about 91 to 93 right here. I recommend pouring colder than that, but 
um, get used to pouring at temps, but just remember that temperature, warmer temperatures really do aid in the cure, but you lose some work time, so you gotta kinda balance that. But this product, you have so much work time, you can usually pour you know, 85 and have plenty of work time. I mean, in the last class last week, it was kind of funny. Just to prove that we had quite a work time, we actually mixed and poured all our samples, gave a two hour lunch break, and then we came back and finished our samples after two hours at lunch. So, so as far as having a work time, you've got it with this product. There is plenty of work time. Scotland, man, thank you so much. I'm jealous of there, there's a place. I want to work over in Scotland. We're in Western Colorado. We're in the kind of the pretty mountainous side of the state. I don't know, are you guys seeing kind of the wood graining look kind of coming through here now? You know, I deal with the public and I feel like I'm just lucky. I mean, every once in a while I get bad customers, but most of my customers are just some really incredible people and we have pretty good relationships with them. But I do think certain business types just, maybe they're just more stressful. You know, I used to do fire and water mitigation. Like I'd go into houses that had just had a fire or, or a major flood and I'd do some parts of the remodel depending on what was contracted. And I did a lot of that um, for a couple of restoration companies and insurance companies when I was younger. And man, I swear, every time you're in a house, it's like that customer thought you were the one that came at night and stabbed their water heater or something. I'd always be like, I'm sorry, ma'am, I know it sucks. I'd try to really empathize and they'd be like, well, damn it, get your shit outside. You need to be done with this, you know, $80,000 remodel that, of my bathroom that flooded that was not worth 80000 before. They'd get super picky and get nasty with you. I remember one lady like accused me of breaking her tub or something. I was like, that doesn't even make sense. I'm coming out here to fix it. <laughs> I haven't even been in your house yet. Just lots of stressed people though. I understood why they were stressed. It's probably stressful as hell having your house burned down almost and have some ugly looking gingy like me come out and try to fix it for you. How's it? Mary? Um, Total Boats and Hose is actually, I'm glad you're coming over to our channel now, so maybe we should do a Total Boats and Hose. And Mary, you're probably amazing. I bet you'd actually be better than me at this. You should come to a class and have fun and come and teach me how to do a wood grain because I am betting you'd be amazing. Usually women are, dude. Usually women are just good at artistic stuff. And then they have a dude like me trying to tell them how to and usually I'm just impeding. I'm just hindering your skill, so. Atlanta, we are doing um, wood graining on epoxy. So we're trying to do an epoxy wood grain. We're doing a quite a bit lighter one than we did yesterday. And I like it. I don't know how much you guys can see it though. Um, that's my only. Class is 349 and it's three long days of mixing and pouring the product that we teach you about here on the lives and you'll mix it over and over and over again and you'll complete multiple samples so it's a pretty fun class in my perspective but that's of course me I teach it so you guys should come to a class and show me how to wood grain I guarantee you'd be better than me and what do you guys want to what do you guys want to bet this shit's going to light on fire if I torch it who thinks it's going to be a fire and who doesn't because I sprayed a lot of alcohol down early but you know what? I pay the bills here, so I'll oh, see it wasn't that bad. I was all worried about it. Ain't nothing to nothing to worry about. Don't ever light anything on fire, that's what I meant to say. Just because it looks amazing and fun and exciting does not mean that you should do this. If there's kids watching this channel, turn it off. I'm probably gonna cuss soon. Something bad's gonna happen, so cover your ears, children. And don't ever start fires. Ooh, the charcoal, not a bad, not, not, not bad, not bad. Now I'm gonna go back with, I wanna do a little bit of gold. You guys will have to be patient. I'm gonna run and grab my gold over here at the other table. And I think we're gonna have some gold grains in there. 
So I'm kind of deciding, I don't know if we should do gold or shimmer gold. You know what we should do? The gold we have mixed. The gold on hand is the better is better than the gold that's not on hand. Okay, and then of course, say what? Um, no, not a good epoxy like this does not yellow. This is a very high grade epoxy. A little bit of blue. I know that's crazy, but I kind of wanted a a light blue hue to this wood. Smurf, we'll call it Smurf cock. I did not say that. You either got it or you didn't, so. Dude, Josh, thank you, man. Thank you, Josh. Dude, everybody, thanks. I've, I just got thanked again last week for my service. I have not served my country in the military for like 15 years now. And I only did, I was only in the Marines for six years. And I see so many people that serve, it, serve their country in just different ways, whether it's a school teacher or anything for life. And they work really hard and they never fuck up. I was a little F up kid. When I was young, I probably messed everything up. I got kicked out of school and everything. And then there was these people called taxpayers that paid their taxes all the time. And because they paid their taxes, it enabled me to be that little kid that would learn how to shoot stuff and learn about leadership and all these things I didn't even understand the value of till much later. So thank you for being a bunch of taxpayers out there. I did try very hard to, to serve my country, but like I say, I think everybody else does. And it took a kid that didn't have a lot of opportunities. And, you know, they didn't give me a lot of opportunities in the Marine Corps, but they did sure, I, I learned one thing. I remember over in Iraq and I thought, dude, if I'm willing to go through something this hard, I will be successful no matter what I do. And now that's easier said than done. But I remember that thought and I was like, I think I can outwork somebody if I'm willing to put up with some of this stuff I'm doing, so. You know I'm spraying? No, I'm just, I'm just trying to add one more color to this, guys. I need, I need a few more colors in this. Because then we're gonna cut it, so, you know what's funny? I, I'm so bad at explaining what I'm doing that I haven't really told you guys exactly how I'm planning on doing this. And what's, what I'm really doing right now is um, I keep spraying different colors and I rake them with a stupid little knife underneath the surface. Now under the surface, there's little tiny lap lines of this color all over the place. But we're gonna sand all the top completely off. So we really don't, I mean, it's fun on the live to show you what the top looks like and we can make this look really pretty when we torch it, I think. But always remember what we're going for is the cut look of what's down underneath. And that's why it's so important to keep scraping it, keep spraying some more colors. And you might even make it look like it's ruined on top. But you guys be the judge of the piece I'll show you outside and tell me if you think it really ruins it. So. So Josh, thanks for being so kind. You were probably being a good kid and going to school or something, doing your job when I was in the military. All right. We're gonna try to do some knots. I hope I'm not naughty. I hope, I'm, I, hope I get this right. You know what though, who cares if we get it right? If we walk away from this and we learn something and we get better at doing knots next time, well then I guess we didn't fail, did we guys? So I don't really care what anything looks like if you understand the process and understood what you did wrong, understood what you did right, what you'd like to see next time. The, I just try to teach people to organize themselves and really understand what's happening with the product so when they get a crazy idea on their head, they know how to manipulate the product in a way they can achieve it. So. Remember, we do do classes every month. Thanks for hitting that like button so much, guys. I appreciate all the likes. I know you guys all just gave me flowers and roses and cowboy hats. I'm kidding. I don't know about that. Um, we're at Countertop Epoxy. Hit that like button and or follow. Follow. Hit the, thank you for the like and then hit the follow. See, I suck at this, guys. Hit the follow button though and watch this channel. 
Who? Mel. Mel? Thank you, Mel. Dude, Mel, you're always awesome, and thank you so much for always supporting our channel. If Mel wants to come out to a free class, she can. Just got to tell the girls Levi said it. And they'll be like, that sounds like something Levi would say. They probably think I'm an idiot, but I like hanging out with cool people. So. My stand-up? My, stand my stand-up comedy skit thing has not been approved by a stand-up club yet, so it's just too offensive. No, but I really, I, it always was as a kid. I did always think it would be fun to do stand-up, except the only way I think that I would be funny, it'd probably be so bad, they'd probably end the show. Bill Burr would probably walk out and be like, oh my gosh, this guy's horrible. Uh, do we sell kits? We do sell kits. We sell kits and ship all over the world, and especially the U.S. and Canada a ton, and we ship to about 27 other countries commonly, so make sure if you, um, if you are interested, give us a call if you have a project you're working on. Um, we have what's called super tracks for our concrete outside, and um, and then we can epoxy over concrete, of course. And it's my harsh, hard belief that we have by far the most high, high tech, high quality product, and we can kind of prove that. I mean, you can look at our SDS and see that we're way better. Our mill thickness is everything about what we do is. I'm trying to target quality and quality alone. I don't really care about some cheap profit margin um, at the lack of quality. So. We are doing a wood graining table, guys. I'm trying to put a wood grain pattern in an actual um, door we did. So I'm, I sprayed down a few colors already, sprayed a few. Um, now I'm going to torch it again so you guys are going to be even more confused. Ooh. That wasn't an accident. Remember, guys, no fires ever. Unless you want to have too much fun, you should not light any fires. guys I'm a professional that's what I tell people we do we have dealerships we have installer um, contracts um, countertop epoxy is more the DIY side and diamond coat epoxy is our contractor grade product that we sell to contractors and everything that's all the exact same recipes we just have a significantly larger um, product group than we do with our with um, countertop epoxy because we have some complex products we teach people how to install that we really can't sell unless we have instruction on them so we do a lot of really specific instruction about epoxy and okay let's hope this is my last time probably so I hope I don't totally jack this up but did I ever spray the gold I did I did not spray enough gold did I guys so I'm gonna spray the gold and then I'm gonna show you the table that we're kind of mimicking a we're gonna be a lighter form of what I'm about to show you and I have to go work on it a little bit anyways so I'll just work on it with you guys and then we'll come back in here I'm gonna probably try to scrape this a final time and torch it and be done or should I scrape it right now I'll, I'll come back and scrape right now real quick before we go out there and try to continue this wood graining Poland how are you doing best time to call me um anytime between nine and five mountain standard time or eight and five sorry we're here at eight in the morning eight to five mountain standard time and if you need a specific call back or anything just let us know okay now i'm taking this weird little tool and i have layers of epoxy on here with color and now i'm going to try to create my wood graining effect here So, as I said, this will be my last and final time over this. That's what I said last time, I think. But I don't like it. If 
you're patient with me, I will show you guys a really nice table that we're finishing right now. And you guys can be part of my vote on a few of the questions I have on how y'all want me to finish it. So. Now when you sand this, it's going to expose all these little striations from where I scraped this different color down under the surface. And that's when you'll see your really natural wood grain. So right now, I'm glad you guys can see this. So now you, it'll put some context to the piece that's going to be finished so you understand the look you get once you sand it. And I sanded it really coarsely, but I'm going to show you guys a little bit more sanding and what I'm trying to get out of it, the look I'm trying and how I'm going to get, how I'll achieve it. So you should know. So trust the process, guys. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm doing wood grain. I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. I'm always wrong. But um, this is wood graining epoxy. I poured this over a hollow core door, and I sprayed all these different colors down. Now I spray, and I scrape it. And I've done this before where it turns out looking pretty good. And I will show you a couple things that we're doing right now so you can have some context to where this is going. But basically, as lame as this may seem, if I didn't scrape it a bunch, I wouldn't have enough like actually striations of wood grain under that surface when I sand it off. Because when I sand it off, I want to actually kind of, it's like taking a rock apart and, and polishing it. And you see all of a sudden all that grain shows after you sand it. Before you sand it, all it looks like is a scraped piece. Um, but it'll take all that color off the top and we should have a really nice, light, simple looking piece of wood. Well, a piece of epoxy that's meant to look like wood. You told me to do a wood pattern and it looks like a penis. I mean, I guess we could zoom in on that one. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's one. Hey, we're gonna do some knots and then I am showing you guys. So if you're getting impatient, I promise you it's about to get better. I'm gonna get way sexier. The job's gonna look good. You're gonna make a bunch of money. If you just share our post and hit the like button, you're gonna be rich. Don't you guys love those posts? It's like. If you share this post, you're going to come into great financial blessings. I'm like, dude, I pray to God. I don't, I don't reshare really posts about making a million dollars. That's not my goal, anyways. The goal should be peace. Peace and. Did you ever have that shoulder surgery? Um, no, I ended up not having it so far, but I've actually been working out a lot, trying to, trying to kind of rehab my shoulder, I guess. So. We'll see if it works. You know, I can work with this project about two to three hours if I want to, so. All right, now we're just our boring old clear. Kerwa? My work's Kerwa? Does that mean cringy? Oh, right on. Thank you. I appreciate that knowledge bomb. You guys are amazing. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching the live. I'm about to show you some funner stuff. Hopefully our little wood grain effect turns out. But like I say, unfortunately, you don't always get to see what this looks like until after we sand. All this top should be gone. So the top layer of, of this should be completely disappeared before we finish. And There's our little knot. I don't know if you can even see that that's a knot right there, but I do. But I know. Oh, yeah. Mike, Mike I wanted to see the burn. <laughs> I better put it out. Let it kind of set back, flow back in, and burn again. And I'll do this one. around it to kind of tidy it up after I do that. I like to kind of try to get some of that product evaporate out and then I'll try to scrape both sides of that little tree knot that we left.
but try to leave it looking just a little more accurate like a tree knot. I'm sure you guys are having a hard time imagining this being pretty, but I think when we sand it, you'll see. So here we are. Without further ado, I bring to you, here's our drip table we're about to do. We're going to put lights underneath this. This is the glitter one. We're, and I'm hoping we can finish the, this table this coming week. Um, it's going to be more of just a display table with like lit icicles. I hope the icicles are freaking lit. So. so here we are with our, you know, I'll let him show you the table and I'm going to actually grab something to clean it slightly with. And you're actually going to love the way this looks. I guarantee it. All right, as soon as we spray it here, you'll see all the wood grain pop out. And this has just been sanded with 200 and 400 grit sandpaper. So there's your wood grain. Do you see what a different look it has after it's been sanded? And, and all those scrapes, all the scraping action was purposefully done um, that I, in there so that I have all these striations under the surface after I sand it. But if I hadn't have done all those scrapes that look like they're just pointless, I'd never have this, what I think is a beautiful wood look. I think that turned out pretty good. And now it's kind of honed down, dull. I'll go for that every damn day. So. So I don't know, y'all, can y'all see what I'm going for here? We're going to finish this to where it's going to be a satin version of this too. So hopefully you guys, these tables, we don't actually sell these tables. They're just done in class. Um, we usually allow certain donations to be done on something this big. Um, and the donation is um, to a charity or a nonprofit. A table like this, um, I could custom build you one for price, for a cost, or you could just um, donate and um, something this is pretty big it's 12 feet long and it's gonna weigh a few hundred pounds so this to ship might be a little bit of a challenge for certain people to ship and receive um, but we'd still sell it if somebody donated to one of our projects I'd, if you guys want to pay for the shipping the cure time is overnight we actually poured this yesterday afternoon so it's kind of a um, as long as you keep the temp up and I did make sure that we had a really good temperature in this room last night, so. Um, I probably won't polish it. I'm probably gonna tape off and give a bark border. I'll show you a picture really quick of what we're gonna try to make this end looking like. A lot of people won't understand. There's, there's even a lot of misunderstandings on the next phase we do, and then people really love that final look. So that is why we're walking you guys through the whole process. A lot of the things that turn out looking good, people think it looks stupid in the intermediate stages, so they'd never even do it. So I look stupid in the, in the intermediate stages. If you like our rock edges, what do you think of that? The class actually, the class built this whole table, just so you know. I'm actually proud of this because I saw a bunch of class members that were not used to working like this um, and doing this kind of work. They double stacked this. Um, MDF glued and screwed it um, and they did a fantastic job cutting in the edges and probably one of my favorite guys I kind of got on him at the beginning of class because he was messing messing up screwing the sheets together I think it turned out to be him and his brother both really good workers badass dudes who literally did probably two-thirds of the work on this so this is 400 
and I could finish it with this if I wanted, or I could just leave it like this, do the bark, and then run the 400 grit. Say what? Um, you guys aren't going to believe this, so this might create some shit talking, but I got started in this because I invented the whole process of countertop epoxy. It actually wasn't even a term until I put it on Google, so, and I'm still somewhat young, so. And I got told by everybody what an idiot I was, that nobody would want exactly what we're doing right now. But apparently somebody's mom wants it because I sold it to him. This was just, this here is MDF. I'm sorry, I always talk shit, guys, but come to a class and you'll meet me. Y'all, I don't know, I think that's beautiful, guys. Happy little accidents. And let me tell you, the guys that did this, the class, what an incredible group. So it was a really good class this last week. We had about 28 or... 28 people or something like that from all over the U.S. and a couple other countries, but just a great group of people. We are in Grand Junction, Colorado here. Okay. Now for the border. If you guys want to see, I'll show you what I'm... Let me see... I can find what we're trying to target. Okay. This table. Oh, sorry guys. Got to make my screen turn. So if you can see those bark edges on there, sorry, I got a phone to phone. Oh, they're making little phones, sorry. Yeah, so if you see that, that gold border there, that's what we're gonna be trying to put on today. And we want it to look like natural slash not natural at all bark. So I have a weird thought and I have not done it like this, but so you guys might be viewing one of my most infamous mess ups, we, won't, we don't know. My typical tip of infamous. No, I'm always messing something up, so you might get to see that right here. So here is wire pull tape. Same stuff you use for truck bed liners, and the titanium wire should cut through the bark edge when we finish this. So I'm going to put this down, and I'm actually going to trowel what's called our true metal onto the edge of this. So we're actually going to have real brass troweled edges on this. And right now what I need to decide is if I'm capable of tracking a single wood grain down this or what I need to do to create a bark edge on this. So, I think I'm going to start on this side. We are looking at a big table that's nothing but epoxy, nothing but epoxy and work. So, this is probably cost you to build. If you were to build your own table and you just followed our instructions, you could build a table like this for about, like a big one like this would cost you under $1,000. You could build a smaller one for, you know, 700, 500. So I'm trying to kind of follow a wood grain just so it looks like it is the natural edge of the bark or whatnot, but it's a little tough to get this wire line tape to do that, but. Say what? Thank you. I hope I, I hope I get better at that. I, I didn't really like how I did that. And you know what? Just like this. You know how I tell you I don't do things right a lot? I think this looks hideous. And so I do a lot. I'm going to start again. I'm going to try to make it less hideous. God's up in heaven right now, like, looking at me. And he's like, whoa, I messed that one up. He's hideous. Do you think they ever do that? No, God makes everybody perfect. Uh, I can't remember. What did they say this looked like? Oh, yeah, the rainbow wood in Hawaii or something is what they were saying this looked like. Okay, that's better, I think. Just track that outside edge. sees I forgot my pliers. Everybody having a good day today? 
you rainbow eucalyptus yes yeah there's a okay those people were probably my favorites because that was a dad and a daughter that came here and they were both i don't know i'm a big fan of anybody that dad and daughter teams that work together and he was getting his daughter to learn about this so she'd have another skill so and they traveled here together hung out and it looked like they were actually really good friends so that was cool if you're a girl and you want to learn how to do epoxy have faith because you're probably organized and it ain't that heavy and no man you don't need a man to tell you how to what colors to pour you don't need a man girl to tell you what how to mix epoxy so teach you how to be all uppity so my favorite part about today was definitely definitely hugging my little kids so my my little girl maya she's just kind of like she's just probably the funnest person i've ever seen in my life and seems like she just views life so fresh she's always happy about something always grateful she's always grateful if you hear her pray she's that you better not hear her pray but um if you do hear her pray it's so funny all she's ever doing is like um thanking being grateful for everything she does everything she has for her brothers or sisters just it's like funny how she how a kid can really teach you more about who you should be than any adult could ever so that humble sweetness she's she's always she got really sick when she was little and I almost lost her, but she she turned in very, very painful too, some surgeries and stuff as she was little. And it's funny now, after she went through all that, she's probably the most positive little warrior I've ever seen. So, and one of my best little friends. And then my other daughter, Mia, she's just so beautiful. I, I can't believe what she's turning into every day. My little boy is 12, but I let him ride a 450, so he has a bunch of scabs on his knee and his elbow because I'm a bad dad and let him ride my YZ450F at 12 years old. He was hot riding the crap out of it and riding it pretty good, but then all of a sudden, all of a sudden he had a little accident. God bless you guys. Oh, I love being a dad. I'm not, I always say I'm not good at a lot of stuff, but the one thing I know how to do is be a dad. I might not even be perfect at that, but you know, kids need your time, your undivided attention, and unconditional love. And I think if you can give all those things to a kid, you will have a very well-rounded, very good kid. So many messed up kids, like my kids go to a little Christian school, a little private school, and I'm pretty non-religious, but I really do support that little school. It's kind of a good environment, but every once in a while there's drama with the kids as there is probably in every school. But what I notice, the only freaking drama I ever see is 99% like created by parents trying to protect their kid or trying to helicopter their kid into being the only successful person at school. And I mean, we, there's a lot of really good people that go to my kid's school, but, but I would say all the drama I have ever seen was parent caused, and even me, even me, because I'll get mad and overly protective of my kids and, you know, and... I've been a lot more just letting everybody live and let live. Like, even if something bad happens to my kids, just support them in their path through it. Because <coughs> in real life, they're going to have bad things happen. We are trying to create bark, and I'm just masking for my bark on the edge of my fake epoxy wood grain table. So this is all just epoxy. This is three sheets of MDF. We double stacked it, so we cut one sheet in half and, and staggered that sheet. And the other sheets, two full sheets, we just laid down, so um, staggered like that. So we now have a 12-foot table. And so it's 12 feet long. And we're probably going to cut and miter one end. And t who wants this to be a waterfall table? And who thinks we should just put legs on it? I want you guys to tell me. Do you want legs or do you want a waterfall? I'm going to let you guys vote on everything I do. As long as you guys don't pick stupid freaking answers, I'll do exactly what you say. So whoever picks exactly what I want, we'll just pick your whatever you say. I'm joking. You guys can actually decide. Yeah. You know what? What color of true metal do they want? Would you guys rather see brass, copper, or iron? Those are the three I'm interested. Brass, copper, or iron. And it is a trowelable true metal product that is actually metal. It conducts electricity. It's poli you polish it. It's very durable, and we're going to trowel it on and then polish it and burn it, burnish it, and um, create the bark edges. 
There's a lot of waterfalls. Don't go chasing them though, guys. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Brass monkey. That fun the brass is tits. I mean, the brass is amazing, I meant to say. I don't know why I said tits. This tape will, and that says actually, um, wire pull bed liner tape so I can pull it through the true metal while it's partially cured. It's a little titanium wire. It's really sharp too. It's such a small wire and strong that you can kind of cut through a not fully cured coating with it. So I've been using it just recently a little bit on projects and it's been a really fun type of tape to really enable me to do some things I couldn't do before. So, so one side of this tape has a little titanium wire in it. So, you know, we could patina it, but dude, I want to polish it. But dude, patina, that sounds pretty banging. I like that idea. Patina copper. We do a lot of patina copper epoxy, but I want to do a real copper patina. I'd, you know what? I'll do a wall that's copper patina because there's something I've wanted to do forever because I think co patinaed copper, I used to actually install real um, copper countertops that I'd patina. So. True metal is an epoxy that you mix up and it's almost like a paste, but it is real metal. It hardens and then you polish it. It would conduct electricity. Um, and it's actually a real metal particle. There's, it's very thick too. It's awesome. It's, and you can trowel it and really shape it to anything. So, I mean, that's what I'm going to try to do guys. I thought about gold leafing it. That's just some chintzy shit compared to true metal. So, and true metal is really strong. So, I, and both are difficult, but man, I bet I'd mess some gold leaf up. What's up? Yeah, I'll show you guys the wall. I'll show you guys some bronze here real quick, guys. Let me, I will show you our bronze and we'll show you what our true metal is. So you guys have a little bit of context. So here's our bark edges. There's one you guys saw probably, this is not true metal, I'm a, but I'm on the way. This is the one my little boy helped us do. And oh my gosh, there's dust all over it. Sorry, it's normally cleaner, but of course it's shinier than my head when I shave it. So yeah, really shiny. We did polish that. So here, you probably can, but wet sand it, sand it down with like uh, 400, 800 and then polish it back up and see if you can take some of that top yellowing layer off and call our office and get diamond shield. It's a little bottle. It's not the cheapest product, but you can polish that and buff it in. And that's a very UV protective nano coating. So here's our waterfall edge that we did in class here. And I thought about, we mitered the end um, on both ends and I built an undermount sink out of finished plywood. But, and this is how kind of I thought about doing that other table, but I don't know. Here is a tiny bit of copper. And don't ask me why there's only one little copper strip in the whole wall. Okay, I'll tell you. It's because I had done this wall before and I did a big weird pattern on it and it looked so hideous that I just covered it all up and, uh, and I left these high because I wanted to sand through and get exactly this look and it actually exposed more than I thought. Now over here, here's our polished brass and as he walks by, you can really see that sheen on it, I believe, the sheen of the brass so on the reflection there. And that's, um, we actually just put a stencil down and rolled that right out with a roller. If you want it to be a smoother brass, then you can go back over the surface surface I'm sorry pardon me go back over the surface with like a putty knife and get it smooth or a trowel and then you can get a really flat smooth trowel effect but there is our true metal and when it first goes down this is what it looks like it just literally looks like baby turds it just looks like a dirty diaper crap and nobody ever everybody's like you've ruined it but then you finish it and they their faith comes back so I should I should sand and polish this for you guys do you guys want me to sand and polish this really fast so I'll, you know what, I'll do it tonight. I'll do it tonight and you guys can see it. Bubbles and floors is either a porous substrate yeah, that you didn't seal up. Um, and that, that's common and it's difficult. So um, if you need to seal a substrate or something, talk to us. Because um, a lot of times that penetration of product is displacing air. So be thoughtful of that if you get air bubbles. Sometimes we mix too fast. Um, sometimes um, 
I'm, I'm just no alcohol, not spraying alcohol late enough. I mean, our products, I mean, all flooring epoxies are different, but we have a pretty high grade flooring epoxy that as long as you pour it to the square footage and prep it smooth, you should be able to move directly into spraying alcohol to pop out your bubbles, we, the bubbles, and we never use a torch, and you can make a sheet of glass out of it. So hopefully that helps you out. If you have more questions, just call our office. We help people with all kinds of projects all the time, so you didn't have to have bought our product, but we'll cover it up with ours if you want, if something's not, not looking right for you. So thank you guys so much for the live today. I appreciate your guys' time. Please hit the follow button. It does so much for a small company like us. And me and Michael have been busting our ass along with a whole bunch of invisible, amazing crew around us. Um, if you think I'm even halfway decent, you guys would fall in love with everybody else here. So come to a class, um, hit the follow button, and check out our website if you want at Countertop Epoxy. And we have a ton more videos on here and our YouTube channel's the most banging ass thing on YouTube. So check out our, oh, nobody told me my zipper was down. Good job, guys. Good job. Since, thank God nobody was caught gazing there. Thank you. Um, um, I appreciate you guys, and I hope you come back. And you can buy a shirt. You get one of these for free if you come to a class and give us a review. And it doesn't have to be a good one, but this is my new church shirt. So God bless you guys. Kill a pedophile. I'll see you all tomorrow morning.